Yeah. Oh, how are you? Hi guys, good afternoon. So, a few minutes ago, we had our interview with Randall Johnson where he gave wow. his take on uh, mutual funds, Bitcoin, the stock market, wh whether it will crash, what's happening. Uh, but now you're in for a treat because back to back. To. Uh, if, you, if we had Randall, we're now with the property guru and he will, this is like part two already of our Facebook live series. Again, this is to give you snippets about our uh, seminar this Saturday with Randall Chongson and with the man. The myth, the legend, Carl D. So, legend, uh, yeah, okay, this is <laughs> Jewish living, legend, living ah. legend. Yeah, the, the legend lives on. Parang ganon yung, yung dating, no? So, uh, I, I know you guys enjoyed our first uh, Facebook live session uh, last week. Kasi kahit ako, nag enjoy ako, pinapangarap ko talaga ang maging parte ng buhay niya. So, this one is even a treat uh, for me, no? Just to bask. Uh, in his greatness and his expertise. Thank you for coming to my house, Marvin <laughs> Gilroy. Huh? Yeah, so he like owns several <laughs> shares. Maybe VIR watching. <laughs> so, uh, Carl. All right. This is to this is to talk certain snippets about what we will discuss on Saturday. No. So, what can they expect from you first? for Investing Insights 2018. Okay, I'll see you this Saturday for uh, Investing Insights with Marvin and Randall. I'll be speaking about the property sector, so if you want to know what's in store for 2018, where to invest this, uh, this year, please attend uh, Investing Insights this Saturday at SM Aura, 1 o'clock, right? 1 to 5 p.m., yeah. And you will exciting, no? Ibang classing mga priorities niya sa investment, his previous investments are Top notch. Anyways, right, uh, there's a lot of talk about Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin. But, and by the way, uh, if you guys have questions, please comment below. And uh, while he's here, he'll try to answer as much as he can uh, with regards to anything in the property sector. Naman. All right, there's a lot of talk about Bitcoin. Wait, I'm going I'm to say hi to all the followers and fans of Marvin <laughs> Guillermo all around the world, from the Philippines, <laughs> from Apari, Hagang Hulo, all the way to Asia. Middle East, Middle Earth, New Middle Zealand, Earth. <laughs> Australia, America, Antarctica. Hello to all the fans of uh, no. Marvin. No, we don't. We, we don't have fans. We just have friends who are also passionate about investing. <laughs> like can see John Casas. Hey John, I remember you? you. He's a doctor that also attended Stock Smarts. No, so it's interesting that you're seeing a lot of doctors uh, investing now in stocks. Yes, yes. And also one I see I saw someone who's uh, online also Marvin Dungao. He owns 12 Masters Photography, one of wow. the largest uh, wedding photographers in the industry right now. Very, very fast and very uh, growing. Can and you make me look like En Chong Di uh, in a photo possible, shoot? Possible, but, but yeah. he, he's really good in the Chinese market. He has a lot of clients that are Chinese. So Marvin, uh, who came who came up? Make Carl me look D. like Enchong. Yeah. <laughs> now and and uh, but you know, Dennis Poliketo. Do you know? Do you know him? Do you know him? Hey, Big D. How are you? How are you? Yeah, familiar. Tawag niya Lodi ka daw, Lodi. Lodi. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so there. So it's nice now that we're seeing a good community of Filipinos that are uh, investing. It doesn't have to be in the stock market. Nga. Masaya na ako as long as people are investing that they're uh, putting their money into good use. That's yes, yes. interesting already. Eh. Uh, before we begin, no, uh, there's a lot of talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. So, which you think will crash first, Bitcoin or the property market? Which will crash first, Bitcoin or property? <laughs> Definitely, I don't know. We cannot predict the future, no? But uh, I think uh, Bitcoin and property are two different products that go on different tracks. So mm. Bitcoin, I think, is more exciting, more more up and down. I don't have an idea about it. Right now, more down than up. Uh, more down. Time <laughs> to buy because it's down. <laughs> I don't have an idea. I don't have an idea how Bitcoin works. But if you ask me if I will invest in Bitcoin, probably if I have excess money and I just mm. want to learn how it goes, I'll probably set aside and buy maybe a thousand Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> what? What? Ano ngayon? Bitcoin hit eleven thousand US dollars. So it's mga roughly. 550,000 pesos for uh, one Bitcoin. Isang, isang, ano, isang uh, Kia isang Picanto. <laughs> I haven't seen a Bitcoin yet, but uh, all I know is uh, somebody gave me a change today. Kala ko piso, yun pala. Five pesos. Sabi ko, did I get uh, like a Dubai deer house or something? Yun pala, mm. five pesos pala. Yeah. So Bitcoin or property, no? Um, property is, uh, for me, it's low. It's slow, it's steady, it's something that uh, you keep there on the side and it grows and it grows and it grows. I, I've seen a lot of clients, na, for example, uh, let's say we have one client, na Lola. Mm. When she was 45, 
she was able to save 350,000 pesos. Dito, during the 1976 okay. tour. Okay. Oh, I wasn't born yet. You, yeah, were you yeah. born at that time? I was being made at that <laughs> time. <laughs> Depends on what time she invested. Comment so, below uh, if you know how to be made. <laughs> uh, so 350,000 in the 1976. Uh. Fast forward today, Lola is now 80 plus years old. Okay. And she was able to sell that property for I think 40 million pesos mm. without doing anything in the past 30, 40 years. So 350 to 40 million? 350,000 to 40 million. But uh, if you look back at history, uh, never fail. Property always appreciates over time. The, 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 sh the problem lang talaga is tayo, we tend to be in a hurry. So if you want something fast, you want action, you can go to Bitcoin. Can go to trading. You must must be action, yeah. If you want boring stuff like what I do, <laughs> just go to property. But uh, here's here's something interesting. No, my own volcano just erupted. <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, diba? And then erupted, but there's lava flow there. Correct. Uh, is it specific also uh, in areas that probably have uh, calamities close to it? Like for example, you're near a fault line. You're near an area yes. na mabaha, or probably near a volcano. Uh, or near the coastline, of, there might be a possibility uh, tsunami. of tsunami yeah. coming. Uh, would, would that affect property prices also? I think definitely. Uh, if, if you're in a high-risk area, this hinders big developers from putting up large developments. Eh? So if you are near a volcano or what, <laughs> it might restrict the, the, the growth in the development. Unless that area becomes a an opportunity site, like for example in Pampanga, what used to be a oh, Lahar, mm. Lahar area is now a widely uh, used for the for the know, for the cement business, mm. and I think uh, SM is going to build their cement factory somewhere there. But uh, you you then close to that, no Clark will is starting to be developed. Uh, they're yeah. doing a lot of uh, developments there. But yes. is it because the risk of Mount Pinatubo is no longer there? I'm not sure with the scientific study, but I think uh, maybe volcanoes, I don't know. I'm not really good in science, but do they, I think they, they explode every so often. No? So maybe it's not there. That's why Clark is really developing right now. Clark is developing mainly because there's this opportunity there. There is there's infrastructure, there's an existing U.S. grade base that you can capitalize. There's Subic and U.S. grade uh, uh, harbor that you can use. So these are opportunities that can uh, that can turn the area into to growth, to mm. a growth area. But uh, with, in line with volcanoes, no. Yeah. Uh, Tagaita is really booming. Still, property prices there are yeah. are going up. Uh, so the Taal volcano is not really a concern, siguro. I'm not really sure when Taal will uh, <laughs> spew lava. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, okay. In the meantime, Tagaita is really a good place. In the Philippines, I think. Tagaytay and Baguio is very rare. It's, it's a very rare uh, property. I'm personally invested in Tagaytay. No, I like the place because half I, of Tagaytay. <laughs> Tagaytay, <laughs> because uh, Tagaytay and Baguio provides a very rare condition, which is the cool weather. So if you build a hotel in Tagaytay or build a hotel in Baguio, you don't have to spend much money on the air conditioning. And alam mo. Mm pupuntahan at pupuntahan talaga ng taong Tagaytay and Baguio because of the temperature. And I like Tagaytay more because it's more accessible. Eh. You can wake up on a Saturday morning and say, Tara, Tagaytay tayo. In an hour and a half, two hours, you're there. Di ba? You can drive back home. So that kind of feature makes Tagaytay uh, a desirable place yeah, for me. Interesting. Yeah. Pero pro property prices there, has it... Uh has it increased also, or is it, does it go as fast as New, New Valley or Tagaytay in terms of appreciation? What do you, what, what, what has been faster the past five years? You know, years? I always get that question: which is faster? No, I think uh, it's very hard to predict which will go faster. No, but each property will go with its own speed. No, mm. just like a stock market, you, you cannot predict which will go faster. No, so when you invest, you just uh, take note of the features of the property. For example, New Valley, maybe after a while will be more more primary home use because there's a school there it's easy access tagaytay naman is more vacation more tourism area mm -hmm. if you if you let's say put up your primary home in tagaytay baka walang good schools unlike if you're in new valley mm -hmm. you have savior you have uh, miriam you have lasal so it has different features and ano, parang ibang, ibang personalities. But will there be enough roads naman in the Valley area to cater to all of this uh, 
I, I, I assume if they're building from Avida to Alveo to Amaya and also Ayala uh, Premier there, uh, it will spur a lot of people to transfer there. Is, is the current infrastructure enough to hold the people there? Okay, there are two kinds of infrastructure in the New Valley area. One is the Manila to New Valley mm -hmm. and one is the New Valley, New Valley. I think New Valley in itself is able to accommodate it. No? There, there, there's a main road there and there are secondary roads like EDSA and C5. So I'm sure uh, it's, it's a master plan, it's properly designed, so it, it, it can accommodate the capacity. The next question will be New Valley to Manila. Mm -hmm. how's, the, how's the distance, how's the infrastructure? I guess the mindset there is, we have to remember, we used, the center of commerce used to be where, Marvin? Before the Makati Stock Exchange, before the Ortiga Stock Exchange. Where is the center of commerce? Sinabi mo yun sa last video, uh, sa Escolta, Manila. Escolta, Manila oh. used to be the center. You would have big banks there, di ba? So, it's just how, how, it's just how the demographics move. Eh? You, you move from one old town to a new town. Mm -hmm. It happens everywhere. It happens in Taiwan, in Taipei. It happens in Shanghai. There's an old, old town and a new town. Pudong. Yes. Pudong and Pusi, right? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you pronounce it properly. <laughs> So yeah, um, there you go. So New Valley is really to accommodate the growing demographics of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. We are a young population and it's growing. What do you expect? Everybody will live in Escolta. Mm -hmm. As the population grows, the city just expands and expands. Yeah. So there you uh, go. There's a comment from Marvin Dunga talking about the developments in the South. Do you think that South is that booming that uh, Santa Rosa will be a bigger hub than Alabang already? Okay, I think uh, from a bigger point of view, I guess uh, we are all on internet time right now, diba? We want everything fast, diba? Gusto natin, pag-click-click sa Lazada, tomorrow na-deliver na yung ano, new gadget natin. But property is still in property time. It's still mm -hmm. slow, steady, it still takes time, no? I think uh, Alabang is, is way ahead. Alabang mm -hmm. started 1970s to 1980s, so that's what, how many years ago? Yeah, Alabang! Nantang ka na ba? 34. We're as old as Alabang, di ba? So, it took Alabang 30 plus years to do what it is now. So, it's gonna be hard for New Valley to, to overtake Alabang immediately. Mm. No? But the way I see it, New Valley will build a separate life. It will, maybe Marvin Guillermo's kids will now be in New Valley, no? While Baha, Marvin Guillermo Papa is lupa in Alabang. Tayo dun, di ba? Di ba? So, that's just how the, the, the city grows. Eh? Uh, I have, I have an in, pero when you look at it though, I like the infrastructure of New Valley, the way they did it better. Uh, it was, I think I'm uh, more master plan than Alabang. Well, I guess you just have to factor that things have changed. Uh, we've learned more, humans are now smarter, we now have access to information. So definitely, the planning of New Valley would be more and more modern, eh? more, more newer mm. in terms of thinking. So like, I think in the 19, just to exaggerate, no, in the 1920s, probably the roads were designed for what? Kalesa. Mm. I remember for Kalesa. Okay. And eventually, it got designed for maybe tricycles. But eventually, 1940s and 50s, the American automobile came. So you now have wide roads. That's the, the EDSA. These are designed based on the American, uh, when the coming of the automobile. Diba? So things change, things change. Now, things are getting smaller. You've seen, you, you see condominiums that are smaller now. Why? Because it's now reacting to the internet age where you no longer need a pile of books. All you need is your Kindle. You, don't, you just need your phone. Sometimes you don't even need your laptop anymore, right? True, true, right. true, true. So, uh, I, I agree with what you say, you know, that uh, things have changed as well. So, uh, but first ranking. First ranking. Alabang, Alabang Sadrosa. Okay, force ranking Alabang Santa Rosa. Once you put budget into play, it will make a difference. It will make a big difference. Now, because I don't know, a property in Alabang will ah. cost you this much. A property in Santa Rosa this much, and that in between is like tens of millions. Mm. So if I was a starting family, I was somebody, let's say, with a 20 million, 15 million, mm -hmm. I may not be able to buy something substantial in Alabang. 15 million up now, right? Diba? Mm -hmm. So it really depends. So I would say, okay, I have a very tight budget. I'm okay to go to Santa Rosa. I have schools there. I find work there. I market there. I'm okay. Because that's exactly how Quezon City, right? Quezon City, are you familiar with Quezon City, bro? Yeah, we uh, have Talas Manileño oh, in yeah, Cubao, Cubao and in Landers. <laughs> Cubao used to be the first uh, mixed-use center. You have entertainment, you have mall, you have residential. So, if you're familiar with Welcome Rotonda, 
Mm. Manila yun, sa Manila. Manila. That's the boundary between Manila, downtown, and Quezon City. Mm. In the 1950s, when you cross Welcome Rotonda, it's considered crossing to the province already. So Manila was considered the, pro the Manila province? Manila was the prime. No, Manila mm -hmm. was prime. Mm -hmm. was the downtown, di ba? So as you go out Escolta, you go to Espana, you, and then you further out to the realest ng trend, then you go to Welcome, palayo ka na, probinsya na yung Quezon City at okay. that time. You know there's a trivia. Quezon City was purchased, I think, I don't know, 200 hectares, ah, for the whole Quezon City for 750,000 pesos. The mm -hmm, whole Quezon mm -hmm, City, mm -hmm. way, way, way back 1930s, I think. So okay. that's like a few cents per square meter. Okay, ang daming interested sa Santa Rosa Alamang topic. Meron naman question again. Eh, pero should should the developers matter daw? Parang it's coming to Ayala, Philinvest, pag Alabang versus Nuvali. Parang Santa Rosa is represented by Alabang and Nuva, uh, Ayala and Nuvali. Then Alabang is really Philinvest. Yeah, I think Philinvest and Ayala are both good players. They all they, they both play on different uh, market segments. Mm -hmm. So yeah, both are good. Naman. Both have a good quality development. They've proven themselves in the market. So I'm okay with both. Just have to see where what's more comfortable for you. I, I've just noticed lang no uh, between uh, Philinvest Corporate City then BGC. Parang the growth in BGC is faster uh, than what we're seeing in Alabang. Yeah, I think uh, mainly because BGC uh, was is nearby. Okay. BGC kasi when it was starting uh, around the 2002 Metro Pacific Investments pa yun. Yeah, hindi naman siya position as BGC. You go to BGC because I want BGC. It's more of you go we go to BGC because it's whole lot cheaper than Makati mm. and there's really no choice. There's no land in Makati. So people who wanted to do the BPO, mm -hmm. they had no choice but to do it in BGC. It's the closest alternative. Mm -hmm. And there was large track, large chunks of available land that you can buy to build what is now the buildings of BGC. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, sometimes th that's why we're, that's what, what we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about on Saturday now. What are these insights? Diba? How, can we, how can we predict what's in store for the next 10 years? By studying mm -hmm. history, you study the boom of BGC, which started at 2002. Mm. Makati was started at 1950s. Oh wow, that long, huh? Mm. Then you have the McKinley Hill, which started at maybe... 2000s, yeah. Yeah, 2000, 45,000 per square. Now it's what, 200,000 per square. But if you look at McKinley Hill, Hill from, a, from a far point of view, you can almost predict that that property will boom it. Diba? So things like that... You 45, can, huh? 45, 50 when Grabe. it was started. Now it's 200,000 per square. So. If you bought one property, let's say for 12 million, it's now four times more. So, and you did not do anything. Kaya nga, when Marvin asked me, Carl, do you want to go into business? I go, what am I gonna go to? What do I need to go to business? I'm not, I'm not smart. I don't know have, I don't have any good business idea. Business, kasi, I guess, business you will make good money. If you do a good business, it makes you 30% return. Para si Marvin Dungao yan. Okay. Oh, para si Marvin Dungao. But I guess the downside of business, if you're not, if you don't have a good product or idea, you can go five years working on your business, diba? Mm -hmm. And at the end, parang zero. Kasi you cannot get back whatever money you spend for salary, mm -hmm. a rental, construction cost, marketing, advertising, lahat you cannot get it back. But if you invest on a property, and you just keep it there, relax, stay put, let the development go, ar go around you develop, then it will surely go up. Marvin was asking me, what is so far my best investments? No? Mm. Well, 2008, I remember driving around BGC. And BGC was... was well, not much yet. Not, not much, yeah, much. Yeah. Okay, BGC started 2004. So there was nothing in 2004. No? Well, well, it started Metro Pacific 90s. No? Ayala took over 03, 04. Nothing. They Starting built from, market market. From I think market beginning. market was one of the first ones. Yeah, right? market market used to be called the Chinelas market. <laughs> so a lot of Chinelas crowd before. Now it has changed. 08, I invested in a 36 square meter condo in Burgos Circle. Mm. 36 square. Forbes Town? Forbes Town. Mm. For 2.8 million pesos. 2.8 million pesos. Value today, 6 million if I sell it. But I'm not selling it then. Cash flow. 30,000 a month. Easily, 30,000 a month. That's how much return. So 360,000 a year. 360 a year. But but take note, it's a, easily a 10% return. Okay. 10% is it a big number? 
it is a big number if you start comparing it to let's say your money in the bank getting 3%. Okay, 3% na. Gusto ano ba? 3% generous na. Generous. Very, very generous. 3% and 10. Big number? Not really. 7 points in between, di ba? Pero take a look at this. 3% return on your bank and 10%. What you need 30 years in the bank to profit, you only need 10, 10 years in property. Malino ba yung Marvin? Yeah. A 3% return to get the same amount, 30 years. Pag sa rental property, a 10%, 10 years. That makes a big difference in terms of your life, di ba? You wanna enjoy life as early as you can, di ba? Nice. <laughs> and daming questions about... I, 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 I have time if the audience okay. are still up uh, There's a question about what's your take in Arca South. I've, I've, uh, just to give you a background, I've been doing... After our interview last week, it got me interested because Carl is such an uh, advocate of real estate investing. I've realized that Arca South now is 175,000 per square 175, meter. Yeah. Pero if BGC is 200, Arca is 175, Arca hukay palang halos, pero it's already 175. So what's your, uh, what's your take on the growth in that area? Is it advisable? Or if you would, you would force ra rank it against BGC and Valley and Alabang, where would it play in the okay. Carl D. Force I ranking? I think uh, Arca South uh, will, will significantly change once the Skyway connects. So we need that Skyway to connect. I think it's uh, in two years time. Eh? Okay. So that will is it really... starting na ba? I, I think so. I think okay. it's there. Yeah. So that is really a big deal maker for Arca South. No? But uh, I think Arca South will be a beautiful place because it's low rise. I, iba kasi yung low rise buildings eh? because of the airplane zone. Diba? It's low rise, so it's gonna be a more spacious area, uh, not as high rise as BGC. So when people ask me, Carl, will the property prices go up? No. I think most of the property prices someone will go up it depends on the speed there will be some who will go as who will go fast there will be some who will who will, be, who will go slower no? like for example Karina was on the phone with a, with a, with a client you know uh, they're selling in a heritage memorial lot <laughs> heritage memorial lot uh. purchase maybe long time ago maybe uh, more than uh, 10 12 years ago for 1 million okay Fast forward today, 18 million. Huh? Without doing anything. Uh. So this is memorial lot in heritage. Why so expensive? Well, heritage is heritage. It's, the, it's near Forbes, mm. it's near Dasma, it's near BGC, it's near McKinley. It's a very prime piece of property. So is there is there a big demand for that when considering that there's cremation already? Okay, is there a big demand for that? No, I think there's a big demand for that in the upper market segment, diba? I mean, you have 300 million, 400 million. What is 18 million for you to, for your uh, forever, <laughs> forever life, diba? Forever property house. So it, it, it addresses the, the upper market segment. Mm, okay, the, okay. Uh, the, what's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, diba? You, you, kami ni Marvin, well, ako, I'm still in the basic necessity food, shelter, uh, the need for love. Lexus uh, transportation. So, <laughs> Si Marvin, medyo na sa ano na yan, eh, mga the need for, ano ba yung last stage well, sa taas, the need for? Self-actualization. Self-actualization. So, <laughs> it really depends. So, so many, iba-ibang tao are in different stages of their Maslow's needs. Eh. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, so Arca, the driver there is the, the, the connecting But what I've seen also from, no, because I follow a lot of the developments, because it's very, very much connected to uh, Ayala Land stock, no? Uh, I think there, the subway will also pass there. Uh, I think it's so, part yeah. of part of the stop. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the powers, the universe will make it connect. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. There, it's just. It's just. Uh, just wise, no, to connect a business center to your metro subway, no. But here's my advice, no. You don't need to force yourself. Eh. Manami naman choices out there. Eh. If you're from Quezon City, don't, don't bother in some area na malayo sa you. You're, you're, na, you're not familiar. If you're from Quezon City, take a look at Vertis North. There's, I, I invested in Vertis North. I'm a fan of Vertis North. I like Vertis North. I'm excited with it. So, yun, if you're from... If you're from Alabang, there are some growth area in Alabang, diba? There's a, I think there's a new Alveo property there yeah, also yeah, near yeah. on the... 
Panda Alabang. Huh? So Alveo is building a mid-rise uh, residential with office development in Alabang. So what what is that what is that telling you? Land is now getting scarce in Alabang. In the 1980s, it's all land in Alabang. Now it's moving to condominium. How would that affect land values? It would drive it going up, going up, going up. As 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 one commodity gets rare and rare, the property goes up. That's why property is really just supply and demand. So you go into places where in supply is low, demand is going up, then you're safe. You just need patience. Property is medium to long term. Just don't be too too ano, parang too excited about it. No? Nalala ko yung Carl, nung bata ko, that was Big Bang sa Alabang. That entire area was Big Bang Big Bang sa Alabang. Alabang. Yeah, Payaning yeah. sa Pasig. <laughs> diba? What you, so, hanapin nyo na yung next carnival area. Then invest there. Okay. Uh, so, you have you have your Arcas out. Then yeah. you have other properties. No? Uh, let's answer some uh, questions okay. sent Dima here. Questions. Uh, yeah. Ito. Another one. Please uh, give 10, us insights views. on Ayala Development in Porak, Pampanga. What, okay. Is that different from the Clark? Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Porak is a development in the in Clark, you know? So this targets the market segment, which is comfortable being in the north. Mm -hmm. So for people who likes to be in the south, they may not they may not connect with Porak Pampanga. You know? But Porak is designed to cater to people in that side of town. So they are given the option to have better developments. They have master plan developments. You have better industrial parks. Will it be like New Valley? Parang New yes, Valley -like? that's exactly the plan. So it's gonna be a New Valley up north, anchored to Subic and Clark. So okay. lots of opportunity there. It's uh, It's been going undergoing development for the past three years, but uh, moving forward the next three years, you will see exciting structures come up now. You have the country club coming about, and uh, you have the industrial zones coming. So you'll see more more uh, more community happening in Porak in the next okay. three years. Will, will it uh, move as fast as... How, how much is per square meter there in Pampanga? I think Pampanga is slightly cheaper than Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. but uh, not, not super cheap. Okay. So it really addresses and uh, the market segment it's targeting is people who like to be in the north. Okay. People who, who have factories in the north, people who prefers to use um, uh, NLEX, then SCTEX, so that's okay. the market segment. So if you're from the south and you cannot connect with Pampanga, no need man. No how, how much is New Valley right now? For an, say, Al I think Alve that is the, is, the, is the land prices different for Alveo and ALP also? Yeah, I think New Valley, it averages out at around 21,000 per square to a high of 27,000 per square for high-end. 27 is ALP. Yeah, for, okay. for, for Premier. So in Pampanga, you're, what you can buy in Santa Rosa for 21, maybe you can buy it at a 25% at a discount, lower, mm. maybe at 18,000 in Pampanga. Okay, yeah. ito, ito interesting. Now, you were talking about 21 in Santa Rosa. Yes. Would you put 21,000 in Santa Rosa or 25,000 in BF Homes Paranaque per <laughs> square meter? <laughs> the, both can go on its own track. No? Uh, here are the pros. No? BF is a, is a lived-in community. When you are in a lived-in community, there's nowhere to go, but, uh, but supply is cut. Diba? So I like it there. Uh, property prices there can go up also because it's lived-in. It's, it's at full capacity. It's growing. For those who are not <coughs> uh, into property development terms, what do you mean by lived-in? It's lived-in. Parang BF. Uh, I'm not from the South. I'm a, I'm a Quezon City boy. No? So, I'm a BF. <laughs> Paranaque. Paranaque. Uh, Alam ko lang is yeah. BFF. <laughs> so, BF is... <laughs> Parang I've been in BF uh, a few times. Parang Daming Korean restaurants dyan. <laughs> madami. It, 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 you have access to, to restaurants, right? And the community there is it's tight. Eh. Di ba? Parang, di ba? And uh, so, may, may, may opportunity in BF. No? It's, it, it, it's, it's a built-up community, so I like it. New Valley naman is something more futuristic. Di ba? So it's really up to you as a personal preference and let's say okay you compare the prices do i want to be in bf okay i have old houses and neighbor or you know what i can go new valley all new houses new mall master plan city new school new structures lahat bago i like the trees on the sidewalk i like the bicycle path i like the cool weather from tagaytay i'll choose to live in new valley so mm. it really depend on your on your choice of lifestyle but personally i would go for new valley 
kumbaga, I'll take my chance. Right, look safer also eh. Parang... eh. These are modern cities eh. These are modern cities developed because the master planners, they, they, they're more educated now. It's more global. You have access to information. So personally, I, maybe if I'm going to start a family, I'm going to make a bet, build a house, I'll do it in New Valley. If I don't mind the travel. Eh? Let's say you're, 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 some, you're somebody who has a portable work. Portable, right? Like Marvin Guillermo. He can do his videos anywhere. Right? He can do his blog anywhere. <laughs> he can do his talk so much. Kulang na lang, may Marvin Guillermo na robot who can do multiple ano, live sessions. <laughs> so if, you're, if your career is portable, you're an entrepreneur, I think it wouldn't hurt to buy a property in New Valley overlooking the mountains of Tagaytay. Diba? Nice cool weather. You bike to school. When, you're, when your kid's dismissal is 3 o'clock, 3 one, five, you're already home. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of lifestyles. So it depends what's important to you and how you can make a career out of being in that location. Yeah? Interesting. Jan Rian is asking, hey John. Hi sir, I have a two-bedroom unit in Artigas. Can I aim, aim for expat tenants? Uh, I think it depends on the quality of your Ortigas building. So one thing uh, I try to teach my, my clients is Property, you cannot generalize. You cannot say, Uy, masarap ang Japanese restaurant. It depends. Mahilig ka ba sa raw? Or ayaw ba ng raw? Sushi. Sushi. Sashimi. Bro. Yabu. Sarap. Sarap. So it really depends. And where do you eat your Japanese restaurant? May Japanese yeah, restaurant. Kapalabas mo sa Maisen eh. Ah, Maisen. <laughs> okay. okay. So my favorite is uh, Maisen ba yun? Maisen. I don't know. Yeah. Mas yung baba nito. So, yeah. so, so there's no... There, how does it go? Okay, so if your two-bedroom... It depends on, on your, the building of your two-bedroom. If your two-bedroom is in a nice building, well-maintained, looks modern, the expat from a first-world country might stay in your property. But if your building is medio old, it's not well-maintained, it's dark, Strata. <laughs> it doesn't get the ambience or, or the energy, I don't think an expat who was pulled out from, let's say, a first world country like Japan, US, Australia, would choose that. Mm -hmm. you know? So, I'm not telling your property is a, is a bad property. You know? I'm telling, it's just to give an idea, who is your target market? Let's say your, 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 your building is old. Right? Let's face it, right? there are older buildings in Ortigas. You now have to compete with the market segment that has a tighter budget. Mm -hmm. So, I think there are still expat. Uh, let's say you have an expat na, couple with, with child but their budget is can only get them a one bedroom sa, sa premium property okay so maybe you can make your unit nice and price it close to a one bedroom then the expat will now say oh wow this build this two bedroom here is uh, well made well well renovated although it's in an old building pero pagpasok mo the unit feels new and it's close to the price of a one bedroom dito na lang ako so there you go. That's how you strategize. But speaking of Ortigas, you're, yeah. when you're talking about expat market, you're talking about Capital Commons, Portico, yeah, uh, um, that air, that that types of projects. Um, the, the the expat market, kasi in Ortigas is or Shang uh, pala. There's Shang there also. Yeah. Okay. You're right, Marvin. So right now, one Shangri La in Ortigas, it's by Shang, is the best bet of all expats. It's just a top of mind of all expats. Why? It has the Shangri-La brand. They can connect to it. They can understand, di ba? Para pa tayo, di ba? Pag nasa, punta tayo sa, sa ang bansa, din, hanahanap natin, Jollibee, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Something that's familiar to you, eh. So, Shangri-La is really top of mind right now for, for really the expat with, with large budgets, no? They, they just won't settle for anything less. So, but it depends on where your two-bedroom is. You now have to find the market segment for it. I'm sure meron yan. The problem lang is if your property is, let's say, it, it can go both ways. If you have a premium property, then you're targeting a lower market segment, a lower budget, mahirapan siya. You, you're empty. If your two-bedroom is not so premium, and then you're targeting the expat market segment, it's not a match. So you have to find the match. Mm. If you find the match, then you, no, you'll be happy. If no one is renting in them, uh, how big of a percentage drop do you suggest that they go below the market price? Very good question, Marvin. It's not just about the price. Eh? If you go inside your unit and it feels old, it feels new. Uh, if it, it feels old, it feels uh, stuffy. I don't think I got no kamura yan. Somebody will choose to put in money, neba. So at least you always remember if it's if it's something that you won't stay in yourself. 
and don't expect somebody else will take it yeah yeah yun lang yun lang yeah, we have to understand that. it's like a restaurant you open up a restaurant hindi masarap yung food hindi madilim yung lugar it's not well advertised then rest assured but that's why talas manilenyo as a barber shop really they really know their market eh, they know our, their market our slogan is ano eh come out ugly eh. I come in ugly, come out poggy. <laughs> uh, another one, kaya pa? Kaya pa, basta okay. the audience are there. Okay pa kayo? John, John Rian is asking, is it advisable to buy a 26 uh, square meter unit in Moa area at around 6 million pesos? So please also comment from what city are you from so at least we know uh, who who's listening still. Alright, alright. So, okay. 26 square meter in Moa area. Okay, pros and cons. It's a good property. There's demand for it. There's 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 employees. There, there's people who wants to live who wants to live there, yeah? But the question is, your acquisition cost is now six million versus those who purchased four or five years ago for two point eight million, no? So it's a tricky. It's a very tricky uh, piece of property, mainly because of its acquisition cost. Mm. The place is nice, the place is booming. I personally invested in the Bay Area. I like it there. But Wang, what, you own uh, know, large chunks of Metro yeah, Manila already. I own the land where, the basura where SMOA is standing. <laughs> so I was the one who put in the, the, the reclaimed area. <laughs> so uh, six million acquisition cost. Here's what you do as an exercise. Why don't you find other properties that you can buy for six million? Mm -hmm. Then you decide. Meron ba na somewhere at least rel as relevant as SMOA? Well, MOA is very expensive right now. No, uh, we, we invested. MOA is right now at two hundred forty thousand per square. Two forty. We personally invested. More expensive than, B, than some It's more expensive in BGC, in BGC yeah. now. Uh, we personally invested there when it was just one three five per square. So you see the upside, no? Uh, so. It's nice, no? I'm not saying it's not nice. Huh? I'm just saying that the acquisition cost in MOA now is very high. Do people still want to stay in MOA? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Because of its proximity to the airport, its proximity to the Skyway connection, and it's also proximity to the pier, the South Pier. It's proximity to 168. Right? Okay. So <laughs> 168. So these are features that makes that area desirable. And thus, brought the property prices up now. So if, you, if your money is tight, there are other opportunities naman. Yeah. But the, the market for this is, is this the business crowd still or people who are retiring now or mga nagka-casino or people who are uh, traveling more? The uh, 26 square meter market. Uh, Airbnb it, market? It's broader, yeah. Definitely the Airbnb is strong in that area. Why is it strong? Because it's just nice, eh? Bay Area, di ba? Who doesn't want to have a view of the ocean, to smell the, the, the breeze of Manila Bay, di ba? And there's MOA there, one of the biggest MOA. You have the SMX, you have the convention center. So it's really desirable, eh? Yeah. So, yeah, it's okay. a good place. Good uh, answer. Good acquisition answer. cost lang is a bit high. Uh, and NLEX SX connector will be in uh, Cloverleaf property near Balintawak. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, uh, Cloverleaf, we also that... recommend that because it's still affordable right now. I think it's what, what's, what's Cloverleaf? I'm Cloverleaf. not too familiar with, with that. Uh, who's, who's the developer of that? Uh, Ayala. Uh, okay. Why do they keep asking me Ayala questions? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Cloverleaf used to be a Cloverleaf a Palenque, okay. Balintawak Market. Okay. Nothing really happening there. It's a Palenque crowd. Okay. But now Ayala is developing a, a mixed use place. Panaya commercial natin mm -hmm. for, for my my, ano, my mother company. <laughs> so there's gonna be cinemas there. So that place it's it's affordable right now, it's low price. So if you buy there, it's just safer to buy low and sell high, mm -hmm. I guess, no? This a be buy high, expect a higher high. No? Mm -hmm. So it's just a safer. I'm not saying it's better, it's a safer. So yeah, if, if you're from that side of town, you like it there, you know the market who will rent from your property there. But definitely don't expect expats from BGC to rent in, in Balintawak, diba? So there's a separate target market for that area. Mm. Rickson Ong, is it hey, better Rickson. to buy a condo or land? Uh, this, is, this is always us, no? Yeah. So, Ika, what do, what's your take on this? See, both are very different characteristics, eh. Kumbaga, land, if let's say residential, ah, you buy it and you let it sleep, diba? Sometimes mm -hmm. it sleeps for 30 years, mm -hmm. 20 years. Pero pag mo after 30 years, uy, iba na yung price. And you can only reap the reward of 
idle land if you sell. If you don't sell, wala yan. Okay. Personally, I like also, I invest in both. No? One is for capital appreciation and one is for cash flow. What's more rewarding for you, cash flow or capital appreciation? You know, let's put it this way. If you're seven, 65 years old, diba? Mm -hmm. If you're 65, and for some reason you're no longer active, you're no longer active income, diba? Mm -hmm. What would you do with all your idle land? Diba? You need to sell to, to gain profits, no? So that's the strategy. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying that that will be your strategy. But personally, I like to be 65 or 55 and then you have a 500,000 a month rental cash flow. Kahit gastusin mo yung 500 mo down to the last peso, ubusin mo. Come next month, you have, you have another 500,000. Mm. Ubusin mo ulit, you go on a cruise. Diba? You spend it lavishly. Down to the last peso, you come home empty-handed. Next month, you have 500 something. again. Mm. So it's really up to you. But I'm gonna tell you, to build up a cash flow of 500,000, 300,000, 1 million, takes a lot of patience, diligence, pagtitipid, saving, following Randall Tiongson's steps, <laughs> diba? You have to increase your income, pay off your debt, cover your life uncertainty. It will take years. Mm. So personally, I think, we are really working right now to enjoy retirement. You know, Marvin? You yeah. I, I heard Marvin will retire at 35. Caso, <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing is, yung, yung, the things that I do right now, I, I'll do it until 90. I love, I love it. Eh. Ako, here's, here's, here's my take. Here's my take naman. Uh, some, sometimes we don't focus on retirement, but we focus on living life at our own terms na you get to do the things that you want. Yes. Uh, parang, that it's not it's not just you stopping but you uh, working earning and doing things that you're passionate about but uh, because you're financially free if you choose to stop yes. okay lang din naman you're not working for money but you're allowing uh, money to work for you work because you want to mm. and not because you need to yeah. another interesting question from Furog Avergonzado hey. uh, which which one of the condominium investment has more positive income? Is it office for clients or get, buying somewhere near the university? Okay, you know, each have their own track, diba? If you, it depends on the person you ask. For example, if you ask somebody na may university area, condo, at wala nag-rent, he or she would say, ay, pangit yan, blah, blah, blah. But if you ask somebody na may university condo and he knows the steps, and he said, oh, I've been rented out for, for, for consistently for five years, walang bakante. He'll be happy. Mm. Office naman, I think office. Personally, we, we recommend office property because it's rare. Mm. And, and once you get a tenant and they fit it out, they put their office logo there, they put their office address there, they stay long. But siyempre, ibang acquisition cost of an office. So, you now make a choice. Do I want to play in the market segment where a lot of people are playing? Or do you want to play in the league where Marvin and Randall plays? The, the games the of the big boys. Market no? lang, stock huh? market lang, stock market So I guess in property, the, the bigger the game, the, the, the fewer people can get in. Okay. That's where you want to go. Mm. You want to play where there's fewer players, it, the, the barrier of entry is more difficult. You want to play where the game of supply is low and you control the market. Right? You don't want to be in an area where supply is sobrang dami. Right? Okay, link. Expert right. advice. Carl will rush into a meeting, so I'll just uh, get two more questions two more. and then Grab we're it. done. If you want to hear more about him, he has so much books. He has two books already <laughs> about uh, property investing or this Saturday in Investing Insights. Okay, from uh, Han Saliba. She's from Dubai. Uh, hey, Han. What is the value of Evo City now in Cavite? Very consistent yung mga questions. Ay, Ay, and, uh, is there really a big potential in this property? Okay, I think uh, Evo City is a new development. I heard it was sold out in one weekend, no? Yeah. That fast. So, it's like asking the question 15 years ago, is BGC gonna be a good property? Mm -hmm. It's like asking 50 years ago, when you were still in Escolta, in University Built in Rector, is, really, is Makati gonna be the next city? So, the Philippine population were really growing. What's happening now is we're decentralizing. You know? There will be pocket developments. Evo City 
is catering to the developments towards the Bay Area, meaning the Mall of Asia area, the Naia, the Paranaque, the Sukat. These people will not cross over to Quezon City, Vertis North. This market will not cross over to BGC. They don't like to go to BGC. They want to be in this side of town. No? So I think uh, as long as you are patient, you know that property is medium to long term, investing in Evo City is good. It, it, and you like to be in that area. So ito lang, this is how you process it. No? You're buying the property there for let's say 35,000 per square. You make a comparative analysis. What can I buy for 35,000 per square? So once you come up with your short so list... So it's, it's higher pala than New Valley, eh? Yes, it's oh. higher than New Valley because uh, the analysis there is it's closer to the MOA area in terms of kilometers. Mm. So it's a natural extension of the MOA area and it's, it's catering to a moneyed market which is the Paranaque Logistics Airport Malate, Binondo market segment, which is really, uh, which has deep pockets. No? So that's the market segment. It's just like comparing it to Marina. There's a village near Moa called Marina, mm. 20,000 per square, long time ago, but now, what, easily 150,000 per square. So that's a seven times over the jump in the past 20 years. So, yeah. Okay, very good. So. Uh, so what we know now from the, from our from prices per square meter, uh, Nuvali, Nuvali, then uh, Evo City, then Ar uh, Arca South, then BGC. I think, uh, guys, Ay, no, all the questions you ask me, my answer is I can never predict what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody can predict what's gonna happen. I can only tell you the factors that can drive it, diba? And then you just choose. All of them, naman. All of them are, are controlled by, by, by big developers. No? Big developers because they're able to push it. Eh? Mm -hmm. They don't just build the condo or the subdivision and let the city government develop. So they're really pushing it. Eh? So, and alam mo naman the big developers, they won't go into market segments na alam nila, walang, walang drivers of growth. So yeah, it's safe naman. So you, nobody can predict the future. Uh, what you can do is find the characteristics, find find things that can push it. All right. Yeah, all right. Last question. Last Luis question. Delin. Ba, Marvin? Di naman. Ay, uh, I, I know you have a 2 o'clock meeting and yes, we're 125 ne. Oh, so shucks. yeah, we have to... Uh, time has gone by so fast. It's right. been an hour already. Luis wow. Delin. Southwoods Mega World Condo. 24.5 square meter at 113,050. Uh, 113,000 pesos per square meter. Is this super mahal po ba? Is this expensive or not? Okay. If you're asking... Because you need a place to stay and you like it there. That's Mura. 115,000 per square is Mura. Comparing to Mall of Asia, that's what, 240, BGC 200, that's Mura. But if you don't have a renter and that property becomes idle, it suddenly becomes a load on your back. It becomes mahal. No? So I'm not familiar who you will rent out your, your, your property to, but that's the question you process. If I buy this 20 plus square meter condo in Southwoods, who is my renter? What is their budget? What is their work? What is their extra? If I don't know, I don't have an idea who's your target market. So what am I saying? Before you buy the property, know who will rent your condo. Know, know how much is their salary. Diba? Siyempre, 24 condo, I don't know. Can you fit the family there? I don't know. Or is this a single guy working nearby? I'm not sure. But that's the question you ask. People always come to me, Marvin, and they ask me a lot of questions. And I tell them, I don't know the answer. But I can give you the questions that you would ask yourself. So you can make a better decision. Good. Property guru talaga. Grabe. So, uh, two things. Yes. How can they contact you after this? Should they have more questions? Because there's a lot of questions. Pa that, questions um, comment na lang after when you have free yes. time. So comments, I'll try to tag you. But how can they reach you if they want to get you know, in touch with you? Just put all your questions below. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll just do another vlog. <laughs> answer all your questions. Diba? Okay, yeah, okay, keep in okay, touch. okay. You can message me anytime uh, in my Facebook. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Catch Carl D. He has a segment there this Saturday in Investing Insights 2018. Uh, the link is all below. And what's nice about that, no, uh, it will just be less than 100 people. So, if you have questions, you can approach him uh, it's direct, a very intimate, directly. Uh, intimate, yeah. So, uh, event. It's and it's not like Icona where you have a thousand people there. So you can ask as much questions as you want uh, with the man, the myth, and the legend. So, lastly. Advice for those that want to go into real estate this 2018. 
okay, if you want to go into real estate, uh, please do your homework, study, study, study. Know your why. Why are you doing this? If you want something fast, go to the stock market, go to Bitcoin, but not property. Property is medium to long term. Yung mga naririnig nyo na bonus, bonus, quick money, that's bonus. Diba? It's not always there. And don't buy property if you're still at the stage of your career wherein you're struggling to, 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 to cover for your basic needs. Okay? Property is a product that you buy when you have excess and you want your money to work for you. All right? I've had people come to me and say, Sir Carl, kulang na kulang ang sweldo ko. Can I invest in property so I become rich? The answer is no, not yet. Okay, so number one rule, focus on your active income, make more with your time. It's not about how much you make in a year, it's how productive you are per day. Yeah? Alright, All right. so uh, that's it for now. More videos about this soon. Would you like to be do more of this? Uh, Why not? If I get an invitation <laughs> from Marvin. Huh? So tomorrow, watch out for Carl D. May surprise come a five minute video on what is his greatest investment so it will surprise you what is my greatest investment i will answer you tomorrow <laughs> in marvin germo's facebook page right yeah so all right watch so out, watch out. Uh, thank you so much guys uh, see you all this saturday for investing insights 2018 link below and see you all see you thank you bye bye